Namaste. Welcome to Yoga with Laura Ashland. This is my 10th session. These sessions are anywhere from 20 to 60 minutes long. They will be varied in their timing, varied in their pacing, and varied in their levels. Also, we'll continue to do some interesting things with our yoga practice together. We'll have some core sessions and some legs up the wall sessions, and of course, some nice flow where we will be getting to connect some of our uh, postures together and connect here as we move. I'm so excited to have all the views and please subscribe, hit that subscribe button and we will grow together. Namaste, thank you so much for joining me again. as you begin to slowly fill the belly, expanding the diaphragm, contracting the diaphragm. As you inhale, you expand, and as you exhale, you draw the belly toward the spine. Hear the sound of the wind in your nostrils. And as always, you may inhale through the mouth and exhale through the mouth. You may inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Connect to the sound that the body makes inside. On your next inhale, we'll go ahead and take the arms up, matching your fingers and your palms together as you exhale toward heart space. And again, inhale, come up. We'll take that right uh, hand and bring it onto the right shoulder and just paint a nice circle with that elbow. We'll take it three times out, one direction. Inhaling as you go out, exhaling as you draw under. Last one. Inhale, out, exhale, draw it underneath. Let's reverse that. Inhale, follow the circle, inhale, exhale as you're coming down, one last one, inhale as you take it out, exhale as you lower, Inhale as you sweep up on that right elbow. I'm going to let my hands just drape onto the shoulder blade a little bit. Take hold of the elbow here. Fingertips forward, left fingertips forward. Inhale, come up. 
exhale, turning and just kind of pressing that bicep into the side of the skull. Soften, breathe. One more nice good breath. Exhale. Inhale as that right arm sweeps up, head comes to center, and then turning that right palm and again pressing through the wrist, nice flexion in the wrist, drawing up the muscles of the arm toward the shoulder. And the other side, fingertips. Top of the right, uh, excuse me, left shoulder head. Here we go. Three out as we inhale. Exhale. Conscious movement. Slow it down. Last one in this direction. And reverse. Lift through the rib cage. Press the thighs toward the mat. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. And we'll take it reverse. Inhale, swing it up. Let the hand fall toward the back. A little slip down the shoulder blade a little bit. I'm going to take my right fingers forward onto that elbow. Lift and reach. Exhale, turn your left skull into the left bicep and tricep. Relax. Breathe. Just one more good breath in and out. Lifting the left forearm up, face comes to neutral. Turn the left hand, flex the left wrist, press. Now just let those shoulders kind of float naturally. Let them swim in the air a little bit. And we'll go ahead and come over to all fours. And this time we're gonna go ahead and straighten out the uh, right leg. I'd like you to bend a little bit and turn out the hip. So I have a flexed ankle, my toes are spread. My knee is relatively high, but again, that height is what's comfortable for you. Working that heel toward the back buttocks and opening the hip. One more breath. As you exhale, we're bringing that hip more to neutral first, extending that leg out, and then lowering the leg. Knee meets knee, or knee comes under the hip, and the other side. Inhale as you bring out that left leg. Exhale as I draw it close. I'm going to flex the ankle, wake up those toes, spread the toes as folding in the knee as possible, and then turning out that hip and drawing the heel toward my right buttocks toward the back here. 
Again, breathe. Stay lifted in the heart, lifted and extended in the shoulders and arms, pressing the hands down toward the mat. One more breath. Exhale as you roll the hips to neutral first. You're actually also re-rotating that spine to neutrals. Extend that left leg. Again, flexed foot, pointed foot, yoga toe. We have the Barbie shoe where we press through with the ball of the foot. That engages both the front and back leg muscles. Exhale, lowering the knee. Pressing back to the child's pose for just a moment here. On your next inhale, we're going to go ahead and meet up in the down dog. So we'll curl the toes, get some nice action going in the hip. Pressing through the knees, extending through the legs. Bringing the feet a little bit underneath you. The toes are more in line with the hip rather than way out here for plank. So we're going to bring it up about a foot, half a foot length. And here we go. We're going to pick up those heels, plant that left foot, and as I inhale and rise gently, only high as hip, Exhale, I'm going to bring the knee to the nose, or the nose to the knee. Two more. Inhale. Float it out and up, not too high. Exhale. Round through the cat's spine. Lift that core, knee to the nose. One more. Inhale, send it out. Exhale. Knee to the nose. Inhale, take it out. Exhale, lower down. Go ahead and extend those heels down a little bit. You can also have a cushion for the heels, a, bl a blanket or a pillow from your home. And put that right underneath the heels. Another choice, of course. Lots of choices. Inhale, pe inhale, pick up the heels. There goes the right set of toes planting and getting ready for the left to come up. As we do three of these. Exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, come up. Exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, come up. Exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, taking the foot up again. Exhale, lower down. Big inhale here. Exhale, lower the heels. Inhale as I lean forward. My shoulders come over the wrist just slightly. I'm going to pick up those uh, heels a little bit and use my toes and the ball of my foot to guide the knees down. Here we're going to go ahead and open up the knees to either side of the mat. Exhale as we come to child's pose. Let's take those shoulders and wrists in the opposite direction. Just let the shoulders drape softly over the thighs. Those of you that wish, put this in your toolbox. Wrists in the opposite direction, fingertips toward the sky.
couple more breaths here. Inhale as you bring your hands close to the knees. Press up with your head and neck first. Get that nice alignment. And then using the shins pressing down, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the knees and press back to hero's pose here. Now our second part of the down dog will be a little bit of a twist. It will look a little like the letter A or a ladder. It's nice to get some rotation in that spine. So we're going to inhale, come forward from all fours. Don't forget rocking, be natural in your movement here. As I come forward, my feet get a little bit more freedom for movement. I'm going to drop those toes in, roll toward the ball of the foot, nice anchor here. Hover any amount of time here for the knee. That's excellent core work. If you're only here for a second or two, this is fine. I'm going to shift and extend through the arms, lift my tailbone toward the sky. Here I might go ahead and open up my feet a little bit more. I've seen people do down dog really close. I've seen them do it right under the hip. And I've seen them do it way out. Whatever works, whatever you want to do to change it up a little bit, what feels best for you? We're going to take the right hand today. We're going to go ahead and hold the right ankle. Now maybe you're holding calf. Watch the back of the knee. Hip. And you're going to roll out and look underneath your left armpit. Couple breaths. Inhale, come to center, replace that right hand. Here comes the left hand on the right ankle, right calf, back of the knee. Watch too much a bend or torque onto the knee, thigh, rib, all of these choices. As you exhale, we rotate out, soften and breathe, just breathe. One more breath. Inhale, come center. Replace the left hand next to that right hand. Our next piece is a little modified pigeon. We're going to go ahead and inhale the right leg up. As I exhale, I lift and extend through the shoulders, lengthen the neck. Fold the knee, fold the ankle, press it toward the heart. Lean over the wrists and place my right leg down very gently. I may need to bend and then extend the left side as I slide it back. So we just took a down dog and went to pigeon. This is a really nice hip opener, but I want you to be very careful here. If it's too much stretch for the hip, you can put a block under that hip or the bolster. If it's too much for the knee, you can bring the knee a little bit more underneath you and have a nice folded leg here as you begin to come forward. Those of you that find the middle ground of the knee uh, foot diagonal, that's great. We don't want to really sit onto the hip too uh, deeply. You want to level that out, bring both hip socket and ball level to the mat, to the ground. Many people will bring their shin out parallel to the mat. That's requiring quite a twist in the knee, so be very careful with that twist. Listen to your body. If that's natural and feels comfortable for you, please go ahead and have your shin parallel. Of course, 
coming back midway, diagonal, or drawing the entire foot underneath the back of the thigh. So as you begin to settle in, take your time, breathe. Maybe you come to the elbows. Lengthen the neck. Excellent hip opener for that right hip. Wonderful hip flexor extension on the left leg. Those of you that wish and want to take it out a little farther, maybe you've stopped right there with the elbow. That's perfectly fine to take it a little farther and lower down. Breathe into that hip. Soften the body. Open. Extend. And one more breath. Relax your face. Taking the hand again all the way back to the knee, underneath my shoulder, other side. Inhale as I extend the arms, pressing the hasta seal of the hands toward the mat and raise up any amount. Now leaning forward a little bit to get off that back leg, I'm gonna go ahead and curl the back toe, shift up with my hips, I may decide to come to plank. I may decide to lower the knees and find child's pose, or possibly back up to the down dog. Replacing those feet underneath you. Inhale as I pick up the heels, float the left side. There goes that left leg up. Exhale as I look ahead over toward the wrist just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and flex the ankle, spread the toes, flex the knee, tuck again underneath, and place the left shin down. I may drop that knee, that right knee, or I may decide to just take the top of the foot and slide it gently back. Tender in the knee. Tender in the hip. Again, a block. A diagonal knee, shin parallel to the short line of the mat, if that's available for your knee, or tucking that low limb right underneath the femoral bone of the right side, excuse me, of the left side. Trying not to roll and drop the hip but lifting up, having cushion or pillow here. Kind of fill in those spaces a little bit, comfortable. This may be where your uh, destination is, is just the elbow, but lengthen the neck. The weight of the skull opened up my hands a little bit here on the left side of the leg. When you're ready, taking it out again. This is an option. If this is too much extension in the arms, you can certainly take the elbows down here. Bring hands to the back of the skull if you wish. Lots of choices with the arms. Be safe. This is a modified pigeon posture. Prone or supine. We're not on our backs. We're on our bellies. Another breath. Soften your body on the exhale. Soften the muscles of the face.
taking the hands back to the knees. Inhale, press up, extend the arms, coming any amount in height. Wonderful hip opener. Leaning a little bit forward, I'm going to curl my toe underneath and get off that kneecap. Press to plank. Low the knees. Or back up to down dog. Feels good to either go to plank or down dog after that to straighten out the uh, bent leg, of course, opposite. Inhale, coming forward again toward the wrist, using the toes to help lower the knees. Exhale as you bring yourself back to heel's pose and bring up the heart and bring up the head, circulation, brain. Today we'll go ahead and bring the arms behind us in a weave, but there's a safe way to bind the hands behind you. I'm first going to take out the arms, turn the thumb down, that internally rotates my shoulder, gets ready for a bind. In the back, if it's too much to hold knuckles, you can just certainly bind by having your hands uh, in the uh, QL section of the muscles of the back, the kidneys, but you don't want to be on the spine here. Or if you're wishing to bind, I'm going to come high, I'm going to fold those elbows, come high, find the bind, and then as I inhale, I'm going to drop the knuckles down toward the top of the feet and look up. Exhale, I'm going to fold my body, bring my heart onto my thighs. I may lift up just a little bit here in the hip to place my uh, skull on the mat right at the scalp where the hair and the uh, skin meet, right at that hairline, and then begin to roll and bringing up the arms if available. If this is too much, certainly fold them here, here, or not back at all, here. Inhale as you re-roll right on the cranium, right to the scalp. Inhale as you extend the back of the arms as if someone was lifting me up and back toward that curtain. Exhale, unroll the wrap of the hands and bring them to the left. One more. Inhale, come up. Exhale, turn the thumbs down, fold the elbows. Take the lace, inhale, extend, lift up. Excellent for spine, retracting the shoulder blades. Exhale as you come forward onto the lap. Inhale as I booch my scalp forward just a little bit because I've lifted the hip. Roll on the cranium right in the center. If that's tender, put a blanket right on your mat. Relax. On your next inhale, re-roll through the spine, press the skull into the mat. That starts the inertia, the energy. Inhale again as you lift up. Exhale again as you re-bend those elbows, release that bind and bring your hands to your lap. So this wonderful mudra done uh, early in the morning to start your day takes your spine in extension into flexion. It does not really rotate the spine, but it is a beautiful 
a piece for your back and take it nice and slow. We're going to shift our hips off to the side and today we're going to practice what's called Kurmasana. Kurma is a tortoise, a turtle, and we're going to look like we're going into a shell a little bit. Okay. So we're going to open up these legs. I've got my feet out to the edge of the mat. And this may be your tortoise. Use the hands. I'm pressing the backs of my uh, tricep here, the top of my elbow into the legs. That's what lengthens the spine. So as I press this back, my spine lurches forward and opens or stacks. It feels so good to have that support for the stretch. Now you may decide to be right here and here's your turtle or tortoise. You could also decide to lower the head in a little bit and round that neck, tuck maybe right here for several breaths. Those of you that wish to take the hand out the other hand around, so I'm wrapping. Again, lifting up just a little bit with my arms and creating a little bit more of a rounding here. These stretches are all designed for several options. Anywhere along these paths of stretching is where you need to stop, please do so. Now opening up the feet just a little bit more, I may decide to take my hand to the back and hold on to the glute of the right. I may lean a little bit to get the other arm back to the left. Yet another version of Kramasana. Any of these postures are wonderful for a nice length in the back. And should you wish, I'm going to drive my foot up and let my heel slide down. Bring my heel up and let it slide out and come to full Kurmasana here. Some people will also bring their feet together, more in line with their skull, sole of foot to sole of foot. All these different postures for getting into our show. And again, the way we get out is opposite of how we got in. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my heels in just a little bit. Press up, hands come out, hands slide in. Walk them back. Taking the legs and bringing them together here extending through the spine, hammock the back. Inhale, I'm pressing through the fingertips, brings me straight ahead, and then a nice rotation out to the left as I cross my right hand over my left thigh, extend the left hand behind me, and rotate the spine. One more breath. Inhale as I'm coming through center. Exhale as I take my spine to the opposite side in rotation. And nice gentle breathing here. Rotating the spine after the flexion of Kramasana for tortoise. Yeah. 
inhale as I keep my chin and skull lifted, coming back to center. Then allowing my shoulders to come around the thoracic spine. A slight counter rotation to get down into the lumbar. And then springing back. Taking my hands at the sides. We're going to do uh, one last piece today, which is a, a Vishnu piece. Vishnu is extending the legs toward heaven, toward the sky. So we're going to go ahead and come to the side of the mat. And I'm going to come onto my right forearm. This right elbow is underneath the shoulder, trying not to collapse the shoulder, but press away on the mat. My bottom right leg is extended and flexion in that right foot. Toes are free, but a very powerful extension. And then bringing the left leg in, I'm going to go ahead and just pick up the big toe. I may pick up the uh, ankle, the calf, the back of the knee, this crook of the knee and crook of the elbow is a, a wonderful bind in itself. So wherever it feels good for you to lengthen that left leg, and rather than collapsing, I'm going to press up tall. Doing the very best we all can to keep the hips level so that they're not rolling or dropping as well. So that's open. Vishnasana is extending to heaven. And then we'll go ahead and just release the bind of my peace fingers and the pad of the uh, big toe. Remember staying off the uh, stem of the toe here. So I'm just going to release it, let it go slowly. Tucking in the knees. Pressing up with the hands. Remember the hands bring your spine up. Push away from the floor, elevate the spine, and we'll try the other side. Again, using the heels, my uh, ball of the foot, the heel of the foot, and the ball of the hand, and the heel of the hand to press myself around the mat. Here comes this nice left forearm down, left shoulder uh, is right over the elbow, spreading the hands and finding a nice stack here where I'm in one line. Even here balancing is core. If I roll back, my core goes to sleep. We're going to discuss core next session. I hope you all stick with me for session 11. If I come too far forward, my core will also rest and go to sleep. So I want to be right on that line. Bringing up the right leg. Stable through the left. Flexing the left foot. Picking up the right toes. Again, calf. Back of knee. Any amount. Whatever works for you. A strap. Remember, we have the straps from before. So have a strap for this vision piece. Inhale as we extend and lift. I'm holding the big toe here. Another breath. Exhale, release. Tucking the legs in feels really nice to stretch the back. Hands press my spine up. Coming back again to hero's pose as we prepare for Shavasana. Switching to the other hip. Every once in a while, you're dropping hip to the same side. Switch it uh, off to the opposite side. Rolling down. Another little bit of core here.
opening the legs as wide as the mat, heels and toes out to the corner of your mat or beyond even wider, almost starfish style here. Of course, you can have your hands down at the sides, hip height, palm is up, external rotation of the shoulder. Shavasana, death of our ego as we lie here and feel evenly pressed toward the earth. Heavy. Eyes are closed and heavy. Sight is withdrawn. Taste and smell, constant. They're withdrawn. Touch becomes a constant, the back body touching the mat is withdrawn. Relax your jaw. This union is in all of us, the body, the mind, and the breath. Yoga to yoke, to unite, to union. We all have this. Just become aware. Namaste.